Hi everyone, Ashley Stantin is here. Thank you so much for joining me. I have two very special treats for you today. I have two amazing, wonderful people joining me, Sarah Grandinetti and Cassie Summers. And for those of you who are not yet familiar with them, I wanna take a moment to tell you a little bit more about each of them before we jump into this amazing, juicy, wonderful, amazing interview. I'm so excited to share it with you. So Sarah is the mother of four children, a brilliant writer, and a dynamic facilitator. She's the owner of two successful businesses, Salon Mix and Being You Beauty. Sarah's desire to inspire and empower people to choose more, to actualize their dreams and know their beauty that they are has a depth and breadth that touches people on many levels. While her work as a stylist involves physical beauty, Sarah's target is to pull the inner beauty out of her clients and to help them believe in themselves and see possibilities. The realization that most women don't even remember the last time they felt beautiful led Sarah to create workshops to help women tap into their beauty inside and out. And if you would like to have your life catapulted towards everything you've been desiring, Sarah Grandinetti offers a possibility unlike anyone else. And as for Cassie, Cassie Summers is a mother, an author, a facilitator, and a creator of magnitude. And she has spent years studying the Access Consciousness tools, implementing them into her own life and with her clients from all over the world. Her unique style of facilitating is empowering, and it is set up to create continuous expansion long after the session has ended. She is committed to her clients and offers them total presence, caring, and a willingness to take them beyond the conceivable. Oh, these sound like so amazing. Um, these people sound so amazing, right? I mean, they really, really are. I can't wait for you to meet them. So. Sarah and Cassie are also known as the Sassy Facilitators. And if you think about it, it's like Sarah Cassie Sassy. They're the co-founders of the I Am Beauty movement. And recently, they started a new segment within their business called I Am Beauty with Parenting. So I immediately reached out to them and I asked them if we could have a conversation about this incredible movement that they're creating with parenting. And that's really what we'll be talking a lot about today. Sarah and Cassie say there's something so exquisite when a parent gives up getting it right and moves into the beauty of creation with their children. Oh, it's like a breath of fresh air when I read that, when I say that to you. What if you as a parent could embrace your own special brand of parenting, not compared to anyone or anything else, just by being you and contributing to your children? They remind us that all families are different. Some have more ease than others and some have more conflict. But what if you had the power to write a new chapter, regardless of what you were yesterday or what parenting you experienced as a child? Is it possible that you could create something totally different if the past had no hand in what is possible for you as a parent? So with that being said, let me introduce you to Sarah and Cassie, and let's get into the interview. So here you have it. We're going to join the interview where I am having an amazing conversation with Sarah and Cassie. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you both are here with me today. I, I have so many questions for you. I'm so curious to learn so much, and I've already been so inspired by both of you. Um, by learning from you, hearing your stories. I, by the way, love so much when you share stories. Not that you have to on this video. I'm just saying, ah, oh, the stories that each of you have shared are just so in my head. And as I'm going through my life, I, I replay these stories and it brings more ease to my parenting journey and my, uh, my relationship with my husband, you know, and the way that we co-parent. And I think my son is grateful to both of you as well. So I want to thank you again, and I'd love to start off with um, asking you, how did you start this I Am Beauty with Parenting movement, or even just the I Am Beauty movement, because I was so drawn to it, and there's so much I don't know about it. So could you share with everybody how it got started? Sure. Do you want me to take that one? Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. I think we've already like played out the dance and how we tell this story. So, okay. So 
back in like two, late 2016, um, Cass and I were planning our first foundation class, which is one of the, the classes you can take for access consciousness. We're both access consciousness facilitators. And when Cass and I get together, like creation just kind of, I, I mean, I don't know if those of you are listening, like I've ever had that like yin to yang with creation, but it was like, like creation love at first sight. And so we just kind of like, we're like this and that and this and that. So we're like, how, what could we do to create, or what could we create that would invite people to the space that we want to invite them to in foundation and like looking at themselves as more than what they've always seen in the mirror and stuff like that. So we decided to create a 30 day challenge. And Ashley, I tell you this, um, when we sat down and created the 30 days, which are 30 days of daily challenges that you look at your outer beauty, the things that a lot of times we don't, um, show our gratitude for acknowledge um, our contribution. So like how often do you just like smell something in the kitchen and go, Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for my nose, you know, I and mean, what it, what it gives to my life. So we took, we created this challenge, but we had no idea what it was going to do. And that's a lot of time where creation spurs from, you know, it's like, I have this possibility in my world and I'm going to go create it and then see what shows up. And so, um, it just, it just took off. And, um, now I think we're like over 4,000 people or so in the group and, um, we've done a number of challenges. Uh, and, um, from that creation, other creations were born and this is where I handed off to her. We're so cute about it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So, um, so Sarah and I, we talk a lot and we both have kids. So parenting comes up all the time. And, um, and I think as we kept talking, like it, we started to realize that we're really different with parenting. Whereas I think before we kind of like, yeah, everyone does that. We're like, Oh no, we're, we're a little bit different. <laughs> and, and there's a different energy we be. And, um, and each of us separately have something really unique and then together create something really dynamic. And we're like, whoa, what can we create with this? And we looked at just the energy that we had cultivated in I Am Beauty, um, this energy of tribe, this energy of having each other's back that, that was a total surprise. Like we didn't know that was going to show up. It just did. 4,000 people having each other's back seemed like an impossibility that just showed up. And we we're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And they're like, what would that be like for parents to have a space? to have that tribe energy, to have people having their back, to have us having their back where they could bring up this stuff. We could use these amazing tools of access consciousness that we adore and play with like getting people to really acknowledge their beauty with parenting and, and then strengthening the things that they would like to change or like to grow and, and change. And, um, so we just got really excited and like all the ideas started rolling and rolling. We're like, we're going to talk about this we're going to this and this. And then, so then we, yeah, we did the, uh, we did a four call series with I Beauty with the parent team and we have some creation ideas for more in the future of what we'd like to do with that. Um, the feedback was beautiful. Like, like, and thank you for everything that you said, Ashley. Um, and yeah, so the beauty and the vulnerability that showed up in that series was again surprising and i love how we just keep getting surprised by this <laughs> this amazing um all these amazing possibilities absolutely and and i i will tell all of you who are watching or listening that you know truly the gratitude for the shifts that you're making i was listening to people in tears from gratitude because Sometimes I'll, I'll speak for myself. I showed up on the parenting call just out of curiosity. I just felt drawn to it and I didn't have an agenda of what I wanted to learn necessarily, but so much changed that I was, I was surprised and I was like, whoa, you know, I didn't expect that, but it was so incredible how many different um, opportunities for change you, you sort of offered all of us. And so yeah, it was really cool and inspiring to see all of these people feel so supported. And one of the things I would, I would really like to hear you talk a little bit more about is, I know that one of the things you, you sort of help a lot of people with is that a lot of us parents are really, really good at making ourselves wrong. And, um, <laughs> yep. and you don't have to be your parent to make yourself wrong all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really dynamic way to choose it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
know. Yeah, it's kind of a journey. So, <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how, you know, it shows up for some of us, you know, that we make ourselves wrong for choices we make. And, you know, we, we get into that rut of, of blaming ourselves and, you know, thinking that the way we do things differently or different is wrong because no one else is doing it. We don't see other people making these different choices or functioning differently as parents, and so we make ourselves wrong. I even see this. I'll give you one quick example. Maybe it'll help. I was um, I was at a family gathering, and um, could not say who it was, but it was a family and a family member, and they basically told me that. Um, you know, the way that I was doing something was like weird and wrong. And I made myself kind of wrong for it for a moment because I, I just do things so differently than them. And I was talking to my mom on the phone and she was like, why are you giving them so much power over you? Like, why do you think they're more right than you? And I was like, whoa, well, that helped me so much. But anyway, if you guys could sort of take it from there. Sure. That, that's a beautiful example of, yeah, family, society at the schoolyard, like every everywhere we see i think the moment you become a parent you're looking for the right way to do it like the moment you become pregnant and then you have the baby and it's 10 times worse and you're just like there's got to be a right way if i find the right book or i find the right person to like role model after like i will find the right way to parent and what's so exquisite is that there actually is no right way to parent sorry to break all your hearts if that that's your ultimate goal <laughs> There, there's no right way to parent. That feels and, like a relief. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like, okay, wow, I could just stop going after that. And what if there was no wrong way to parent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, yep. yep. <laughs> and, and if you looked at each, so I love to look at every family, is, it's like a symphony. Ooh. So you have each kid is their own instrument mm. and each parent is their own instrument and each person you invite into your life in, into the, the creation of, so some people are really close with their, with the grandparents, they invite them in or the aunts, the uncles, you're all inviting them to your symphony and everyone plays a different instrument and, and you cannot ever compare that symphony to someone else's symphony because mm. it will never sound the same. And if you start acknowledging the beauty of your symphony mm. and you start like, it's like almost like listening for the little, like the little intricacies, then you will probably fall in love with your symphony and not even realize that you could love it anymore. And then how do you, how do you judge that? <laughs> wow. I love that so much. I'm just sort of like looking at my world right now as you're saying that. And it's just so much more spacious when you say that. And it's so true. And I heard you say the word comparison or compare. And I would love if you could talk a little bit about that too, because that is like one of the biggest things that people show up in my world talking about, you know, I just can't stop comparing myself and comparing myself on social media and comparing myself to other parents. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not, I mean, just, you know, every single thing you can think of, I'm not doing it right. Again, it sort of comes back to that, you know, polarity, but comparison is such a big thing that I'm seeing. So if you could talk a little bit about that, that would be so helpful. I would love to, because that's actually what was popping for me when Cassie was talking. Um, one of the things that we brought up on the call is that Cassie and I are also very different parents as well. There's some, there are things that like we totally kind of look at and we're like, oh, I'm right there with you. And then there are things where like that she'll do with her kids, I'll do with my kids. And we're kind of like, we wouldn't necessarily choose them with our kids. And that's because of the different instruments that they are that right. Cassie so brilliantly shared with you. So when I look at, whenever I find, I personally find myself comparing anything, whether um, it, it's goodness, I have so much of this up in my world right now. I talked to Cassie for 10 minutes before we got on here right now. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm taking this question because I'm actually reminding myself of what, what possibility is to choose. So when I look at comparison, I go to acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. So in, what I can do is if I'm comparing something with that, that person, I take a, a moment to acknowledge or that family or that whatever, mm -hmm. acknowledge what it is that lights me up about what they're creating 
And then I have to choose to go back and acknowledge something that I'm creating as well that's different. So it like flips it on its head. So if, I, if you're constantly tinkering the scale of like the comparison and they're always right and I'm always wrong, if you force yourself to go like, okay, that's, that's really cool what they're doing, but I have to look at like something that I'm doing as well, then it'll, it does this and the comparison isn't as weighted. And it's easier to get like interesting point of view um, when you go to acknowledgement. So you actually go to a space of acknowledgement for the, the other person, their creation, their beautiful children who are never a mess and never speak out of turn. Or like whatever. That actually sounds a little boring, but whatever. Um, um, and you can like look at like that relationship or that whatever and be like, oh my gosh, I totally love that, that they have created that in that way. And let me look back and say like, what can I acknowledge about what I've created? And doing that and having that be a practice, um, kind of helps you move out of comparison because you're having to acknowledge the differences and the beauty in both. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That really helps me a lot too. And I especially, it's, it's so practical to be able to really just have that tool to just like, okay, so what's, what's, you know, what's helpful about this? What's right about this? What's beautiful about both things instead of polarity. Very cool. Awesome. You know, it's like since the beginning of this call, there's this one story that's in my head. So I guess it's time to bring that one up. Um, Cassie, there was this one story that you shared about your boys that changed a lot for me. And it was um, the, the biggest thing that I got out of it. It was when uh, one of your boys had been hurt at school and you went to the school and, you know, he, what, he, he had gotten hurt at school. And, um, what there was there was a message in the story that really rang um a, a big shift for me and th there was something you said about like not buying into the trauma or something like that and i would love if you could talk about that because then of course right afterwards something happened with me and i was like this is so great that i just learned this because i like laughed in a situation instead of was like oh my gosh are you hurt but i but i want you to talk about it because i want to know more about what you meant by that and like how we can sort of not go into the trauma when something happens with our kids. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, my littlest, he's five, uh, kindergarten, and he went out running on the playground and there was concrete and he tripped and he smashed and his, his lip got like hugely cut. And, and so I get, I go to pick them up because I'd missed the phone call because I was on a meeting. So bad mom already. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I'm, I get to the school and my older kid comes up. He's like, you know, Zach's in the medical room. You need to go get him. I'm like, whoa, medical room. I'm like, right away, everything goes, oh, that's pretty big, right? I'm like, okay. So I'm like everything, I'm like any story that I'm building about this or where I'm trying to like figure it out before I get there, I'm like, just need to like move that out and clear that away. Mm -hmm. And then I started walking towards, towards the medical room and and then all my bad mom stuff was coming up like oh my goodness I should have been here blah blah, blah. And I'm like okay I gotta clear that out I gotta let all that go because I need to be really present here with my kid when I get here and uh so then I I show up and uh the the guy comes up to tell me what occurred and I can see Zach in the background and he's got blood all up his nose dripping like it was like they didn't clean him up it was just everywhere so it looked like a mess and his lips swollen and he and he, he's like, he looks like not only did someone like steal his best friend but like I wasn't there for him like that was the whole I was like okay so I listened to all the information and it already started engaging like energetically with Zach I was like I'm here just you know I'm here mm. and I'm gonna you know and that was the first interaction and just but being present not trying to jump into the past, not trying to jump in the future, not trying to fix anything. Just like, I'm here. Hi, I'm here. And then he's like, okay, great. I'm going to go see Zach. And I walk up to him and I get down so that we're eye to eye. And I put my hands on him and I'm like, hi. And again, just I'm like, I got to be present. I can't tell him all the things I should tell him as a mom. And I can't ex project anything at him like, oh my God, this is awful. And you poor you and all these things. I had to just be like, so like really present with what's going on here. How are you? And he's like, not good. And I'm like, do you want to tell me what happened? Because I wanted to hear from him. And so he told me and I looked at him and I just kept being that I'm here. So I didn't have to fix it. I didn't have to pull it into me. I didn't have to feed it and make it bigger or, or 
blame someone. The school should have done this or I should have done this. It was just like, and, and the more I was being present with him, that I actually got that that was having his back greater than anything else I could have done. Mm-hmm. And acknowledging, acknowledging what was up for him, but not, not feeding it and not negating it. Because I've seen parents go, oh, you're fine. They negate where the kid is, right? And, or like, oh my God, this is awful. I can't, but, and they feed into it. And I was just like, really got the sense of like, I just got to be present. I got to acknowledge whatever's up for him. I can see that, like, yeah, I can see that. Like, he's like, there's blood all over me. Wow. I can see that. Not saying it's right or wrong. Just being with it. Right. And it all just started to like unravel for him. And then he's like, can we go home? And I'm like, yeah. And actually, first he's like, can we go get library books? And I'm like, sure, we're all bloody, whatever, let's go. Let's we can exchange your library book. <laughs> so we got in the car and then he just started to kind of unwind from it all mm-hmm. and like tell me more about like all the stuff. And then we just went home and had a cuddle and it just diffused like brilliantly. Cool. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I'm so grateful I had the tools then <laughs> to yeah. be in that space because Um, I was raised more like the trauma and like, oh my God, this is awful. And that's probably where I would have gone. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, um, the, one of the other things you said in there, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm so, I, cause when you initially had told the story, you had written it out. So hearing it with you telling it like this is so cool. And it just, it gives me chills. It just, everything you guys talk about just resonates so much with me. So, Um, and I, I had uh, my parents, um, I had to sort of ask them to ask my son questions when he got hurt instead of telling him he's okay. So my son would fall and hurt himself and they'd be like, you're okay. You're okay. And I was like, please, please, can we just consider asking him, you know, you fall and it appears like you're hurt, but actually my son sometimes falls on his head purposely like he means to do it and he like wants that deep input so it's like he's not actually hurt he actually like did that purposely like that was like the, what his body required at that time and he's like yeah that's good and I'm like cool he knows and so now when he's really hurt he's faster to tell us he's hurt because we like give him the space to like ask him the question so so many cool nuggets from that thank you so much um so Sarah I want to ask you about uh, what a, another thing that you have brought up that really, really helped me so much is you talked about, you've talked quite a few times about allowance of um, like your in-laws when they have projections or ideas or when they want to tell you how to do something. I've, I've had this a lot and I was like not an allowance of it. I would like shut down. And so I listened to some of the ways you are so in allowance and so present and can you talk about how the people listening, how we can sort of maybe be a little bit more available when people are needing to tell us how to do things when they think they know it's right their way more than our way? What do we do? Well, um, so I haven't always been brilliant about it, and it's not just my in-laws. Let's just put it that way. Okay, sure, sure. That's just what's coming to mind. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I know. I'm just saying, like, we all have um, influences or people who want to tell you I mean, with a grocery store and someone's telling you like not to talk to your kid that way or whatever. Um, so brilliant tool with access is interesting point of view. I have this point of view or interesting point of view. They have this point of view and um, you can kind of go to that and be like, okay, cool. Like, I don't, and, and what that actually does, um, and I don't know how often um, that's explained all the way through, but what that actually does is it takes you out of alignment and agreement or resistance and reaction. So it looks uh, sometimes when someone's coming at you with advice, friendly advice, or the how-to of something, um, that the kind thing to do is to align and agree, right? So that they are not put off. And what you're, you're knowing is, is that you want to resist and react. But what, what does that tell you right there is that it looks like there's only two choices, align and agree or resist and react. But there's this other space that you can be with anything. And it looks a lot like just nodding your head and smiling and thanking them. Um, but knowing that you don't, you not only do you not have to choose what they're offering, you can go into acknowledgement if there's anything good in what they're offering. Cause sometimes like there's in a hundred percent, there's 20% that you can use that you can be like, okay, cool. Like I can take that and do that my way. Um, but if you're in resistance and reaction, you won't actually get that 20%. Um, 
And you, so you can go into acknowledgement of that. And then you can acknowledge where, um, whether you choose to take any of the advice or whatever has been given to you um, is your choice. And you're, you don't have like what your mom had told you, like, why are you giving them power over you? Like, you don't actually have to be um, subject to any of their judgment or create from that space. Or so there's that, that time where you're like, okay, if I do it this way, then all these people will be happy. But who, who's not happy? And a lot of times it's you and, and having the awareness of that, um, what you're pigeonholing, holding you, your family, your kids, all that into in order to create a reality that's comfortable for someone else. Right. Um, it, it, it doesn't end up working out. So if you're like aware of that, poss of that being a possibility, you can actually go, okay, cool. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Is there anything here that I can create with? If there's not cool, like nod your head, thank them for their time and their effort and their, and, and, and acknowledge where it's coming, where it's coming from too. Yeah. So my in-laws are, they, they and love us so much. They love the kids so much. They, my husband is the apple of their eye. And I know that they have total gratitude for me as well. So nothing that they're telling me is um, coming from an unkind place or a desire to hurt me or my kids or have me be an unsuccessful mom. It's the points of view and the very strong cultural points of view that they have mm -hmm. and acknowledge and like being aware of where someone's coming from when they're delivering that. It's like, okay, cool. That is totally worked for you. And you don't necessarily have to worry, like say it all out loud, but totally worked for you. And that was a different time, a different place, a different culture, a different reality and whatever. And I'm going to choose for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So culturally <laughs> I'm thinking about how my, I grew up in a, a, a Greek family and I, I married a Greek man also. So we have, you know, Greeks everywhere and there's like heavy uh, guilt and <laughs> heavy worry. And I learned while I was growing up that like, and, and my sweet, amazing, kind mother, also really believes that you're not really a good mom if you're not like worrying and so like have you seen this have you seen this with other people like you do that? oh you pretend to worry where are you not willing to manipulate so oh i'm gosh. i am married to an italian family and mm -hmm. um i'm 39 years old and if i'm getting on a flight like across town like my mother-in-law often will still call me because of the imminent danger that i am in she wants to make sure she says goodbye and it's not like, I know you might die, but I'm like, I know she knows I'm getting on a plane right now. Yeah. And I know that that's her way of showing me love. And yeah. so if, if I'm sitting having coffee with her and she knows something that's going on with like my 20 year old daughter or my 17 year old son and or the little girls too, whatever. Um, I have a 10 year old, six year old as well. Um, and I see the worry come in her world and she's checking in with me. Like I've also been like, I know, I know. That's so Gosh, good. you know, because I don't have to align and agree or resist and react. That's not me aligning and agreeing. It's like, okay, cool. What does she need to hear? Right. You know, and that's that manipulation thing. And people can can take manipulation in that word and like totally tweak and twist it and make you an awful person. But if she knew that I was also concerned and worried, she's actually less worried. So it's actually come like she's less worried that I'm not worried enough. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm actually contributing yeah. to her. So like wherever you're not willing to just be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna roll with this. Like what what's required right now in this 10 seconds? And right now she needs to know that like I've got I've got it handled. I'm covering the worry, the worry angle. I've got the worry corner covered. You don't have to worry as much. I'm in the house. I'll, I'll worry for you. We're good. <laughs> it's so funny. But it's so brilliant. It's so amazing. And it and honestly, like, so so tell me if if you're getting the same thing. I feel like that's a kindness to her. And so, okay, so this is something I, I find so, so, so fascinating that a lot of us have a, a really clear definition of what kindness looks like and what it is and how you, you know, can be when you're being kind. But I have found that sometimes it's being really intense and sometimes it's being really soft and there's a lot of space and maybe more than a lot of space, like tons and tons of space within kindness. So can you, can you sort of pick up from there and talk a little bit about that? How diverse kindness can be? I, I think Cassie, you want to talk about that one? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. So, you know, um, I don't have a ton of rules at my house. Like we're, we're pretty like asking questions every 10 seconds. That's kind of how we roll. And, um, and 
I, I also don't allow myself, like I don't choose to be a doormat to my kids, if that makes sense. Yeah. So <laughs> there's times that actually happened on this weekend. I was with my sister and there's times where I, like my, my five-year-old was running around the parking lot, not being aware at all. And it was like, like busy traffic and on ice. And I said, like he'd run up and I, I yelled intensely. I was like, stop right now. And he didn't listen. I'm like, you stop right now. And I had this huge intensity and it wasn't like, so when my parents would yell at me, it had anger mm-hmm. and a wrongness to it. Like, it was like, I'm mad at you because you're wrong. And I was like, no way in my world was he wrong. It was, you will stop because I'm demanding that you stop right now because I care so much about your body and you are not paying attention. So that intensity came out like, whoa. And he's like, like his face dropped, you know? <laughs> he was like, whoa. And then it came over him and then total gentle voice. I'm like, look, this is the situation. This is what was going on. Can you look around? Getting him to like that space of awareness. And and so there was nothing but kindness in my world when I was yelling at him with full intensity. <laughs> and <laughs> truly, and um, yeah, so where are we, where, I almost want, like all the listeners, like where have you been that and not acknowledge that that's the place that you were coming from? Because when often like growing up, we look at those places where we've been, um, we've seen something directed at us and there's been a lack of kindness. So then we assume that that means lack of kindness. We label it. Right. Right. So then when that shows like, we don't ever want to do that or be that to our kids because we always want to be kind. (laughs) So then we, we, but we, what we end up doing is cutting off all these other energies available and all this of the contribution you can be available. So I, I totally, um, resonate with what you're saying, Ashley, like the different levels of kindness, it can show up in so many ways. Kindness is letting your kids um, fail. It's letting your kids fall down and being like, I got your back. Sarah has actually a really cool story. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Would you share that about you, Steven, and like giving him the keys to his life? I love that so much. I'm like, which story? I got a lot of them. Yeah. So I was a helicopter mom for a few years. Um, it it wasn't really working, (laughs) but it was really cool to acknowledge that, um, being a helicopter mom and kind of micromanaging certain areas in my kid's life, um, that a, it was an unkindness because I was actually preventing him from doing it. Um, and it was also a space where I was choosing from wanting, a lot of times we use our children um, as a reflection, or we see our children as a reflection of us. So if they're doing well, they're, like I said, made a joke before, if they're well-dressed, but together, don't snot coming out of their nose and dirt and whatever, then we look like we've got it together, right? So I am aware now that this, a lot of the space that I was coming from with my son and raising him and like micromanaging him with grades and school and his future and all that shit um, had a lot to do with um, me. And, and it's even to say it right now, knowing other people other than the two of you are going to hear that it's, it's like vulnerable because like, gosh, like where I could then go to judgment of like, what did I do to my kid be, about me? Cause I couldn't, you know, see that it was a choice that I was making about me. But as soon as I acknowledged it, I was like, okay, I have to give him back the keys to his life. Like I can't, and I, and I don't intend, I never intended to drive the bus forever, but it was almost like okay, as long as like you get to college, like I had this like benchmark, if you get to college and you're in the college you want to go to and that's what your target is, then I've done a good job and I can move on to these other two, right? <laughs> um, but last year, last year was his sophomore, it was the end of his freshman year of high school. And I was the mom that was like checking the website every day, like seeing where, if he turned in his homework and like where his grade was at so that I could remind him where his grade was at. Because I, if somewhere I decided that he didn't know, well, he didn't know. And you want to know why? It's because he, I was checking. And then I was going to tell him. So he he didn't know that not turning in a paper or not retaking a quiz dropped his grade, you know, a full letter grade. He didn't have that. He didn't have that awareness because I was the one being like, you're at a B now. Okay. Oh, you want to be back in a day? You got to do blah, blah, blah. You want to be, you know, whatever. And, um, so somewhere around his freshman year ish, I, um, he's a junior now, just finishing his junior year this week. Um, 
I just literally was like, okay, I need to talk to you. Come on over. I was like, what's your target? What do you want to be? Like, what do you want to be in your group? But not from a space of like, like you could be anything. Like, do you, do you still want to go to college? If you don't like, what do you want to choose? Do you, whatever. Right. Um, and he gave me a list and I was like, Hey, do you know what it takes? And he said, um, no. And I was like, okay, well, first off you need to graduate high school and you need to get into a college. But what I want you to do is go research that career. And I want you to go find out, um, what college actually you want to attend to achieve that target. Cause we need to get a plan going. And he's like, okay. So he did that. He came back to me. I was like, okay, now what are the um, entry, like the GPA that you require to even apply to this college? Okay, cool. Where are we at now? All right, cool. You got your roadmap. Here are the keys. And I said, I'm not checking grades anymore. I'm not going to stay up late night doing projects and it's going to be up to you. So the day that you graduate, you will know you did it, that I didn't drive the bus for you. You know, you did it, you created it. And if you don't, you'll know you did that too. <laughs> I was like, oh. I was like, and you won't look back at me and say like, mom, why didn't you do the A, B or C for me? And since then he has been a more determined student. He's been more dedicated to his, to the targets of his future and what he wants to create for his life. He's had no um, judgment of me. Like, it's almost like when he didn't turn something in, it would be like, well, mom, you, and whatever the, the end of that sentence is, you know? Yeah. Um, and he's still, you know, scared to leave home for some reason. I'm trying to kick him out, but just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to be a huge mess when my boy leaves, but talk, talk pot. I'm, I won't be, I'll be fine. I have Cassie. I'll call every day. <laughs> right? Clear that um, right up. <laughs> yeah. But, but he is so dedicated and he is like this, this week, um, parenting story to add on to this. And if I'm running on too no, long. No, please, time, please. I want to hear okay. this. Um, I get a call on Mother's Day, Mother's Day on a Sunday from a teacher telling me that Steven, he Ooh. caught Steven, my son cheating on a test. <laughs> I was like, okay, what is, what is catching him look like? And he said, um, first of all, I did not align and agree with the teacher just because he's an adult. Cause a lot of parents do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did not go into defense of my son. I just asked a question. I was like, Hey, what is catching someone cheating look like? He's like, well, he was staring off towards another kid's, um, paper long enough to have it look like he was cheating. I was like, okay, cool. Thank you. I said, thank you for the information. I will talk to my son later. We were at like the dinner table with all the family and I'll talk to my son later and I will get, I will reach back out to you if you have any further questions. He said, okay, thank you for listening. Blah, blah. So I talked to my son, my son, mom, I, I've never cheated. I don't cheat. I was like, I know that about you. Okay. Let's be clear. Like did something happen that week that you didn't, you weren't prepared and you've done all this work. And now this one time, like you made a choice that we have to look at. It's like, mom, I don't cheat. And my son led me. He's like, mom, he's like, I'm, what is it? He goes, I'm nearsighted. Is that what that is? He can't see far away. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I have perfect vision. So I've never had glasses. I don't know. Yeah, I'm nearsighted. It's that's what it is. <laughs> okay. It is. Okay. He goes, um, mom, he's like the, where the desks are even spaced out in the, the small print of the paper. He's like, there's no way I could have even stared off into that, that long enough or even like focused enough to get an answer. He's like, and I took all my notes. It was an open note test. He's like, all my notes are on the back of the paper. Like he had all these things, but it wasn't from a place of like defense. It was kind of like, this is so silly. Yeah. What this helicopter mom would have done normally would have been like, I'm calling this teacher. We are going to go have a meeting. He is going to hear my boy. My boy is going to be exonerated from all charges. Like I, and I felt all that come up and I was like, no, what's the choice here? And I was like, oh, I gave him the keys three years ago. Okay, buddy, what do you want to do to create, what do you want to do with this? Like, what, what do you require from me? Do you want, I have your back. What do you require from me? He said, you know what, mom, I'm going to handle it. I can't tell you like the tears, the, all the stuff. I was like, <laughs> I didn't do that in front of him, but I was like, okay, cool. I'm proud of you. And then I went to my room and like, yeah. I'm so proud, but he did. He went into the teacher. He followed him around on his break that day. It's like, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. She was like, well, I saw what I saw. I was like, okay, cool. Are you willing to talk to me? Can we sit down and can you hear me? And he pestered the teacher every day on like the nutrition break. He found the guy at his class and the guy would walk to get coffee and he would follow him and they'd follow him back. And he did it every day last week until the teacher sat down, had a meeting with him, heard him and he got um, the credit for the test. But that would not have happened if I went crazy, you know, and all my defenses wanted to and ask a question, what do I want to create here? And um, it's changed a lot. So thank you for asking me to tell that story, Cassie. I added on to it and now it was a really long story, but I hope you enjoyed it. Loved it. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us are like, whoa. Like, gosh, 
And I'm just thinking about how many opportunities I now have just opened up to ask a question out of curiosity when a teacher or someone who's watching my child or a nanny or babysitter or whatever, like they did this. And instead of just like aligning and agreeing or believing it or just going into like, oh, they must have done something wrong or defending, you know, for my child against that person, like, oh, what does that look like? What did, what did you see? What did you experience? Like, because as soon as you started telling me, well, he just sort of was like looking around, like, ah, oh, gosh, like, I don't know that I would have thought in that moment to, to just simply be in, in space and curiosity like that to get more information. That's so cool. So, and everything else in your story is cool too, but that really, really stuck with me. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for that. That's so cool. Um, so, okay, so what else, what else are you really, would you love for people to know about I Am Beauty with Parenting? Like, what else really lights you up about this movement that you're doing? Like, what's been really, really fun for you? Uh, I'll start on that one. Um, when it, when it, so, okay, oh, really excited. Um, I would love to invite people to create with their kids. Yeah. And like, this is a weird concept because I, I was never, I never saw this growing up. I never got to create with my parents. Um, that was just, and then I never really saw anyone do it and diving into these tools and access consciousness and asking questions. I started to really get the huge contribution my two little boys are to my whole life and living. And and that I can be to them. And then I started to look at it. I was like, wow. So I'm like, somehow we've created these three powerhouses. What, what would it look like if we created together? And I was like, whoa. And it started with like um, three years ago, I chose to separate from my um, partner. And the kids were very little. And I, I asked them, okay, like, like, where would you like to live? Like this, just starting, this is where we just started to create our lives. Like, what would that, what, what would that be like? What, what are your asks for our new space? And um, the asks were like a giant backyard and like all these kids in the neighborhood and like all these things, right? And then they're, and then they're like, what would you? So I started playing with the energy of like what I would like to create or what I would like to see there and all these things. And who oh, ends up showing up a week before we have to move. We have no place to live. And I'm like, oh, and then a week before, like not only everything we asked for showed up, but greater than we had ever imagined it could. Mm -hmm. And in really like, uh, like such a miraculous way that it was like, it was crafted for us. So I started to look at that. I'm like, well, if we could do that, what else could we do? So we looked at like, even like I, as simple as it's the weekend, I don't go, okay, well, I've got this to-do list. I'm going to drag my kids around. We might throw in a play date just to like, you know, give them something to do. I look at, it's their weekend too. It's my weekend. It's their weekend. Like it's, it's, so we start, we have our conversation. Sometimes it's Friday night. Sometimes it's Saturday morning. Okay. So what, like, what would you like to get out of this weekend? And they'll be like, blah, 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 blah. And like all this creation. And then I'm like, okay. I'm like, can, you, can I let you guys know what I want to get out of this weekend? And sometimes it's like a lot of fun. Or I'm like, I really want to do this with you guys. Or sometimes like, I actually have some chores to do. I kind of got to do this. I got to do that. And then so what, we, what occurs is we start to go into this energy of co-creation. And then so the whole theme of the weekend starts to unravel in this way where we're having each other's back and making sure that everyone's getting their asks. Mm. And sometimes there's a little reminder, like, oh, you know, like um, a little disagreement's going on between the two. And I was like, yeah, but do you remember, like, Zenner asked for this. And then Zach's like, right. Okay. <laughs> we go into the space. So I'm like, and, and that's just so small compared to, like, what I know is possible. Like, I get it's, it's huge. It's like, what if, like, what you create now cultivates this giant future, like, 10 years down the road with your kids? Yeah. So it like, and I love even like Sarah's the conversation with her and like, what, what are your targets for your future? And the whole time she wasn't, she wasn't in, here's the keys. I'm separating from you. Goodbye. Here's your future. She was like, okay, cool. I get what you're looking at. Like I, I'm here. I have your back. I'm going to, but and at the same time, you're going to 
you're going to be the driver of the bus. And so I, I start to look at that, like where we can have independent lives and create a future together. So that's kind of like a bizarre concept, I guess, but that's something that I would love to have more conversations about and invite to people's universes, I guess. So Cassie, do you also um, invite your kids to be co-creators in your business? I do actually. That's so cool that you brought that up. <laughs> and it, Talk about that. <laughs> well, even like, okay, so I had this, my kids are brilliant. They blow my mind. I was um, having this conversation with Xander. Sometimes we like right before bed is when we have our most brilliant conversation. They actually started going, hey, so do you have any awareness of like, what would it take to get more people to um, register for this upcoming class we have going on in Sarasota? And he like kind of taps in the energy and he's wondering about it. And he's like, you know, mom, I think like it's already created. Like, it's just, you've got to let it show up. And I was like, oh, that's really like, that's cool. And then he goes, and then he's like, reach out to your friends and let them know it's going to be a blast. <laughs> I'm like, I've never heard him use the word blast ever. So I was like, he's like, cause mom, it's going to be a blast. And I'm like, it is going to be a blast. <laughs> so that's, that's where I, I'm always inviting their awareness. I'm like, what do you guys know about this? And then once they, they are tapping into that energy, they're contributing to it. And then, and I also love to um, invite them to, like, they like to travel with me. So if I bring them to certain classes and at those classes, I'm making connections and I'm meeting people. They will make connections. and like. Yeah, and they will bring people, like, connect them to me. So, like, I really get this co-creation of a business going. And they, they're very aware of, like, um, the greater, like, I succeed, the business succeeds, the more wealth that we have, their, their benefit of that. So, like, they're in, as invested in it as I am invested in it. And they'll create space for me. I'm like, hey, guys, you know what? Like, I need, I'm like, sorry, you're home today. I really need to do this telecall or this whatever. Um, like, is that cool? We work with me. And they're like, of course, cause they, they're just as like, it's important to them because they get what it is creating for us in our future. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's, um, that's your, I love playing with that with my kids. And I think that'll just grow and grow as they get older. That's so cool. And I'm wondering too, if you could talk about either one of you who wants to pick this up is. I, I sort of almost like hear in my ears, some people who might be listening might be wondering like, well, how do they know that you making money is going to actually create more for your lives? Like it doesn't always look like logically they understand that this creates this and this timeline. So, so like for some people who might be saying, but, but I don't know if my kids really get that or really know that like, and they're not really like maybe acknowledging how brilliant their little amazing they could be big kids or little kids, but can you talk about how oh, aware kids are? <laughs> I'm, ha I'm happy to start it with something popping for you. Um, why don't you go first? Because I was just going to give like a pragmatic tool for that. So I, I love that. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, like I, I really look at my kids as huge, infinite beings with little bodies. I don't talk to them like they're kids, except for maybe the language that I use is different if that makes sense. So if I was to have like a complex business conversation with someone and about like strategies and all this stuff and all these like uh, buzzwords, I wouldn't use that with them because then I'll spend all my time explaining the buzzwords because they're very curious. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? But when I look at like, um, so if I'm having a conversation like, okay, um, so if more people come to the class, then uh, one, we get their registration money, right? So they pay for the class. So then that, that increases our wealth, right? They get that. It's like, cause they get the, they get, um, the, the exchange. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Cause they exchange money for toys. Like they exchange and we play with that too. Like I let them pay for things. Like I let them, they will, um, sometimes run my bars and I'll pay them money. Love. So they, yeah, they get it. And like my, um, someone actually asked him, uh, Xander, to run, the seven-year-old, to run bars at an access class, and they paid him 50 bucks. That mm -hmm. meant a lot to him. Like, it really 
So they, they're really getting the exchange. Even the five-year-old, I'm looking at like, what would you like in exchange for this? We exchange sometimes money, sometimes we exchange other things. So they understand the exchange. So then when I'm explaining like, okay, cool. So if we can draw in more people, then, then our income increases. I'm like, but also if we draw in more people and um, basically consciousness increases mm-hmm. and they, they, and this sounds crazy because how could a five-year-old understand increase of consciousness? How is that even possible? And what, one thing we do is like, we do the heavy and light, like that was number one tool. So anything that's light for you is true. Anything that's heavy for you is there's something in it that's not true or the whole thing's not true. Mm-hmm. And so, and we, as I said, we don't do a lot of rules. We live in the question. So I'm always asking them and they, they have to go from heavy to light. I'm like, please don't use your brain. <laughs> can you please just, can you use your awareness here? Like, yeah. is that actually light? And then, so we play with that. So then as we talk about expanding consciousness, Mm -hmm. um, they get a sense of that based on the light and heavy. Mm -hmm. And also, sorry, I feel like I'm dropping three stories into one because I'm really excited. We talk about like, like Xander just had this big thing about like the planet and earth and all this stuff. And he comes home with like, you know, we got to cycle and we got all these things and all the wrong things that we're doing. And I was like, yeah. And I'm like, and what do you think would occur? if the consciousness on the planet got grew Ooh. and he was like, and he, I let them look at, it. I don't give them the answer. Yeah. And he was like, Whoa. And then I'm like, what would occur with the planet? What would occur with pollution? What would occur? And he's like, well, I get people would probably not do it as much. So it's simple. It's maybe more simplified, but it's like, he does have it. He gets that sense. So when I'm like more people come to the classes, consciousness, expands we get to be that gift in um in the world they're like sign me up <laughs> let's do this <laughs> oh my gosh i love and that just, and just the sense of their enthusiasm shows me that they get it yeah. even if it's not complete cognitive totally. abcd yeah totally, yeah. totally. <laughs> i'd love to hear what sarah has to say too yes please, please. Well, you hit on it a little bit, but um, if you want your kids to know about money, you got to talk to them about it and um, where money comes from, what it contributes to our lives, what we can choose as a family, what we can choose individually. Um, I didn't come from that at all uh, growing up. And I also didn't start out my journey as a parent 20 years ago, um, knowing that I should talk to my kids about it. It was kind of like they'd ask for something and I'd either say yes or no like, or, or we can't afford it right now, or we can, it wasn't a conversation about like what hours it went in to create what we just bought and like stuff like that. And so there was a time when, um, I remember the first like kind of weird conversation I had with my son was over a pair of tennis shoes. And, um, I jokingly said to him, um, those shoes actually cost me three haircuts and three haircuts cost me three hours and three hours. And so like, I went down like this and I was kind of joking, but I saw his like, wait a minute, you worked three hours for me to have this pair of shoes. And it just like started linking something together. And I was like, Oh, he doesn't know that. Like, cause money grows on trees. It's in the books. Like they know, right. Uh, yeah. yeah it's just, it, and, and, um, I remember even <laughs> funny story. Um, I think it was my son when I was younger. I was like, I can't, we can't get that. We don't have the money. He's like, we'll just go to that machine and put in those, push those buttons. It gives you money, mom. And I'm like, oh my God, like, so, and, and yeah, I don't remember anybody sitting me down and telling me it didn't grow on trees. I just, one day I had to get a job, you know, like, I don't know. Um, so being willing to have the conversations, if you actually want your kids to have those awarenesses, like Cassie said, like she's having conversations about everything with their kids, asking them questions, making them aware, talking to them like they're infinite beings. Um, uh, one of the analogies I give people when regards to parenting with acknowledging that your kids are infinite beings is, um, you know, when you're like, you're, you've been at a job for a while and they like hire someone new, right? And they say, Hey, can you train the new guy? It, the new guy is just new. He doesn't know what you know yet. You've been there longer. You're not better than him. Mm-hmm. You don't, you're not, you know, um, guaranteed a greater future or what, you know what I mean? It's just that this guy needs to know how to work the register. Like, and so what if, like, for those of you who have worked retail, um, but, but the, the kids that are children are infinite beings. So they come to us in these little bodies and yes, we need to like train the little bodies and help them like understand things and know like that's hot. That's not, and you know, don't run out in the street and get ran over by a bus. 
and acknowledging their very being um, and not, like Cassie said, not talking down to them, but communicating on a level that they can receive at that time. And that will increase and grow. Um, like I said, at the beginning, I have a 20 year old and I have a six year old and I have a 10 year old and a 17 year old in between. So I've kind of like done the, the, the span of like baby to adult already. And that those relationships change constantly if you let them. And if you don't hold your kid into like the little baby, because then you lose them because they're like constantly having to resist and react that to have themselves in their own life. Um, and you can tying it back into that like creation conversation. Um, if you have the conversations with your kids about anything, money, um, anything, life, um, you can, you do that by starting now to have the conversations and not be afraid to like bridge those topics. And like some of the coolest conversations I've had with my kids have been about sex and they're just, there's no point of view on the table. It's just like, okay, cool. Like what, what is that choice going to create? And what is that going to create? And what do you want to see as your future? And does that create for the relationship? And like, what, like stuff like that. Um, cool. crazy stuff has shown up and that might be another topic for another call. <laughs> Everyone, I'm having them back. <laughs> <laughs> that blew my world a little bit. I've never heard someone say some of the coolest <laughs> discussions I've had with my kids. That's incredible. What an amazing capacity. And I think you started off, you know, this call by telling us that you basically realized there's something a little bit different about the way you function with your kids and with kids in general, probably. And that might be one of them. <laughs> that might be a really awesome capacity that you have. And I want to know about it. So yeah, okay, all right, some other time. But um, wow, so brilliant. That's so cool. And honestly, even just you just bringing it up, just sort of like set something off. Like, oh wow, that's possible for that to not be like super awkward and uncomfortable. Like that could be like awesome. Wow, cool. Thank you. Yeah, that, might, that might be a fun side side combo for another chat. Yes. <laughs> I'm game for anything. So yes, huh. absolutely. We'll know when it's time. Um, so Sarah, is there anything that you would really like to talk about? Is there anything, you know, that you're just really excited about with this I Am Beauty with parenting or even I Am Beauty movement that you're doing? Like, what, what are you really excited about? Ah, oh, so many things. So, many um, things so open-ended, sorry. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you on a dive really quick. It's going to get a little heavy for just like, and then we're going to go back up. Okay. okay. I'm in. Um, Last week at my son's high school, there was a, um, the third suicide of a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and, um, sorry, I'm going to get back up. I'm going to get it back up right now. Um, my, my, the way my son internalized it and the way that he was looking at, um, how that, that choice doesn't necessarily have to be a wrong choice if, the, if that was what the child chose um, what was right about it, but what, what could have been put in their world about their unique gift that they be and the beauty that they be and the unique, like, I'll call it like footprint that they came to, um, create here that had they known that would they've chosen something different. Mm -hmm. And it's also possible that their passing like created this awesome ripple effect among the students as well. So it's, I'm not trying to go to the wrongness of it or the sadness or the whatever. But, um, when it comes to I am beauty, like when Kat, Cassie and I like right away, we're have people come up to us and be like, you need to get this in schools. And, you know, we have teachers playing with, um, some of the challenges and stuff in their classrooms and such. And so because we're talking about parenting, we're talking about I am beauty, like the tie for me in that is, um, I tell my girls and my son every day without fail, sometimes twice, three times a day that it annoys them how beautiful they are. And I'm not just talking about their character because their characters are awesome, dynamic, beautiful boo-boos, but um, acknowledging their outer beauty, acknowledging them every day for, like I tell my, my girls, like, do you know how beautiful you are? And they're like, mom, you know? Um, but they, my 10 year old um, has just recently started to fully receive that because she would it's not that she would like point out something that was wrong. Like a lot of us adults do like stop it. My butt's too big or whatever. Right. Um, but she, she would keep a little bit of a distance from it. Um, because I think she acknowledged, she was aware of where if I acknowledge that I'm beautiful, I'll have to like other people will separate from me. And, um, having her get to see that like she can be that and she can be that kind and that, 
um, much of a contribution to those around her and acknowledge her beauty at 10. Like we're at 10. Um, no, she's not going to be railroaded later. Like she, she owns her in a different way. And when kids start to look at um, that, there's less impelled points of view that can get at them in regards to the bullying stuff. So each of these kids that took their lives um, mentioned bullying um, as the reason why. And while, well, I'd love to say that like we need to address the bullies. Um, a lot of times it's the, it can be, it can change sooner at home with, with how we treat our kids that feel the need to bully or um, the kids that are receiving of the bullying, if they had that awareness of their beauty, um, I don't know that like the bullying would stick and create such an impact. So like that for me um, is a huge target for what we'd love to create with I Am Beauty um, with children. Um, let me know how I can help. <laughs> Seriously, I would love to help you however I can. That is something that, you know, one of the biggest, um, you know, I, I put myself out there helping highly sensitive people, highly aware people, right? And they are very, very uh, prone to being bullied. You know, it's just, it's oftentimes what I hear. And so I love so much that you touched upon this because I think this is hitting the heart so much of what so many people, so many um, other um, fabulous people that I've interviewed, like you, your, you guys, <laughs> um, they've told me that as kids, you know, they were highly aware and so they were bullied. I mean, this is just so common that I hear this. So I love that you're addressing this and I would love to address it so much more. And again, I mean, it's like we have these like little, little snippets here that could be such big topics and um, life changing, you know, and, and the word you use is like ripple effect. Um, when we, when we really em empower people to, to know how to handle these situations, we give them tools because there aren't a lot of, I haven't experienced a lot of people having a lot of awareness about how to handle those bullying situations. So anything else you want to say about that? What's coming up? Um, I know Cassie probably has something too. I, I would just say that a lot of the focus on how to change bullying goes about the bully. What was wrong with the bully? What was wrong with the bully at home? Um, what, and, and, and that, I'm not saying that's wrong, but if we've all, we all, okay, you guys, we all have that girlfriend who like, they, like insults or like, you know, comments about their care, their character, their looks or whatever. Like, it's like water off a duck's back. They're like, whatever. Cause she owns her. Ain't nobody take her down, you know, whatever. We, or we've all witnessed that person. And I'm just talking about um, creating that, that energy, that confidence, and not from a place of arrogance or separation, but that confidence in our kids when they're young, that when those things get thrown at them, it doesn't actually have to stick. It doesn't have to, to um, create a wound. And not to say that it won't like make a dent and then them have to kind of like, you know, work through it. But if they have a knowing from day one, their parents, the people around them told them what a gift and how beautiful they were. And they told them every single day when those things hit, it's like that it's not as, as, as impactful or as heavy or, um, to the, to the despair that bullying can take other kids. And so what I'm talking about is yes, let's look at what's going on with our kids who are choosing to bully and be unkind. And let's also build up these over here so that when that comes up, that's actually the thing that that doesn't fit. It's like all of these things are just like the other. Some one of how does that song go? One, so, one of those. One of these things is not like that. Whatever. Oh, when the, yeah. yeah when the, I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. It's okay. With you now. Um, these things, not like when it. that when that stands out, so like and that becomes the odd behavior and not the thing that you have to get behind because we all know that like when bullying is happening or when we're kids, like you look like okay, if I just stay friends with the bully, maybe I won't get bullied. Or if I back the bully this one time, or if I like kind of keep, turn a blind eye, then I won't be the target. And kids are dancing around ever being a target. But if there's a, a, a sea of children, you rise up and like, no, like we're valuable. You don't get to treat us like that. We have our own backs. We have each other's backs. And that's what's going to change. Ugh, love. The, balance will, the balance will start to change is what I'm aware of. And before you say something, Kathy, there's one other thing I, I really want to point out in case people didn't hear it because I thought it was so cool is, Sarah, when you said that you were telling your son and your daughters every day that they're beautiful, you also said, I ask them, do you know how beautiful you are? And I feel like that allows them to, to question, 
do I know how beautiful I am? And, and get into that space of, of not just receiving a compliment, but like owning it. Like, do I know how beautiful I am? Like, that's so cool. And that is something that anyone who's listening can do right away. You can start asking out of that curiosity. Do you know how beautiful you are? Do you know how amazing you are every day and allow them to start to become, you know, in a place of wonder, like, huh, maybe, or nope, not today, but that's so cool. thank, thank you for acknowledging that. And I'll tell you, um, that choice, what that I saw that create, um, when I was telling my kids when they were little, like, you're so beautiful. You're, it, it's, it was very easy to like, kind of be like, oh yeah. Cause we all do are really good at like the deflection. And just what you pointed out, Ashley is like asking the question actually has to take them into like their awareness. And what I was talking about with my 10 year old is because it's been a question all these years, I've actually watched her receiving like expand exponentially with, um, oh gosh, like, so I got to this place of how, do I know how beautiful I am? And maybe I hit like on the Richter scale of six, right? But then somewhere like, you know, months later, I look at her and, and there's like a big 10 smile. Like we got up there, you know, and we're just, we just keep growing because yeah. that, that question let, puts her, like you said, into wonderment and um, it, it allows a space um, for that to grow because it's not measured by what I think is beautiful. Yes. So when someone gives you a compliment that you're beautiful, it's because they're judging you good, bad, good or bad. It's a judgment, right? Um, by what their projection of beautiful is. And so it's actually having her acknowledge maybe even more than what I'm willing to see or what I, what I see. I don't see her every day um, where she thinks things are beautiful or she thinks she's beautiful. No, she's beautiful. I mean, constant chill bumps here. Oh my gosh, I'm excited for people to hear this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I feel like Cassie, you want to say something? Or maybe, maybe it was said. <laughs> she did a great job. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just, everything. So we are pretty much at the end here. So um, I love to sort of finish up by just asking if each of you could give a word of encouragement uh, to the viewers and, um, and then I'll ask you my last question. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just comes back to like, what if you're not wrong? Yeah. What if every time you've ever messed up or said the wrong thing or judged yourself or didn't show up for the phone call. <laughs> what if you're actually not wrong? And what if everything that's occurred up until now is just to get you here? And it's like, what's possible that you haven't even considered yet? And, and even, even the people that love themselves and like, I'm great at parenting. This is really fun. And what else is possible even beyond that? For, I would love to give a, a quote by someone very, very magical. And you all may know her, but I'm going to, um, this quote, I had to make a meme of it this week because my brilliant girl, Cassie said some really brilliant stuff. And so a meme is, is generated if someone says something very brilliant. So anyways, um, she, she said this week, you can't get it wrong. Wrong is an invention. You also can't get it right. You can just be you. And so everywhere you're trying to be someone else as a parent, um, we would ask you to just join and create that and let that go and move, move to the space of you as a parent and the unique gift that you be, that no one else anywhere in any time, space, dimension has ever been before. And just go in choosing acknowledgement of you, acknowledgement of the gift that you be to your kids and that they be to you. And always choose from that space and not the wrongness. Thank you so much. No wonder you guys got 4,000 people like this. Who wouldn't want to just hang out with you guys? It feels so good and spacious. It's like, oh, wow, I can be me. And there's no wrongness. Wow. That's really cool. So I will include links um, to contact you on all of your different social medias and websites and everything. But please share with everyone how they can stay in touch with you and if there are any next steps to take with you. I'll do next steps. Do you want to do 
contact stuff? Contact, sure. I think probably Facebook is a really great way. Um, we're on it a lot. We're, we're very social. We love interacting with people. So you can message us. Um, we have a couple Facebook pages. Sassy is one. Um, that's kind of what we, you know, <laughs> Sarah says it the best, but Sarah plus Cassie equals Sassy. So we started a, a business called Sassy. And from that, we branched out I Am Beauty. So we also have an I Am Beauty Facebook page. We have the I Am Beauty movement. Please, if you're at all like drawn to it, join. We have uh, fun events in there all the time. And um, we'd love to see you there and get to know you and interact with you. Um, yeah, at, at, uh, I think that's probably the best and easiest, most fun way to get in touch with us. Perfect. Okay, so we're end of May right now. So if you're listening to this in the future, I liked calendaring um, from where we are now because I've also listened to calls and then been like, it's next week. And it's like three years ago. So um, <laughs> 2018. 2018. Yeah. So in June of 2018. Um, the uh, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th in um, Sarasota, Florida, we'll be doing a foundation class, which is um, one of the prereq classes for access consciousness. Um, and while in Sarasota, we'll also be doing an I Am Beauty Taster Night, um, which is the Friday night of that class. It's a two-hour taster of a manual that we've written from all of the awareness and stuff that came up through the I Am Beauty um, movement challenge um, and we've facilitated that a number of times and it's always different and so unique and so yummy and such a contribution and kids come teenagers come it's awesome um, so that'll be in Sarasota Florida and then um, oh, the can I add that one will be live streamed as well so Ooh. if you don't yeah if you're coming to Sarasota just won't work for you you can um, just catch us online and we, we interact with you the whole time you're on Zoom like this, so we get to see you. You could ask questions, and we have someone kind of like being your point person, so you can join us. Love. See you guys. And, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and then um, in July, 11th through the 18th. No. Anyways, that's our travel dates. So in before July. that. <laughs> July time. July. Um, we're doing a foundation in London. England. Not Ontario, Canada. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> and there will be a uh, I Am Beauty movement there as well. Oh, uh, nice. A two-hour taster. And then in August, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, we're doing a foundation in LA. Okay. And there will be an I Am Beauty taster there as well. Yep. And that's where Sarah and lives. Then. That's her, her stalking ground. That's right. So that's, yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> And then um, we're looking at, uh, we don't have dates exactly yet, but in November, there will be a two day, two full days of I Am Beauty um, in India. So we're TBA on the date of that. Yeah. And that will be our first full two day class. So beyond excited for that. And where is there a listing of all of these? Which link should they click um, to find a listing of all of these? One of the links. Uh, well, you know what, the Sassy event page, um, okay. it has, yeah, all in there. That's Perfect. maybe the fastest, easiest way. Yeah. Cool. So you can head there to see all of them in one place. Perfect. Anything else you want to share about contacting you? Cool. All right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Sarah and Cassie. I am so, so, so grateful that you joined me. And I hope that all of you who are viewing will continue to take the next steps with both Sarah and Cassie and stay in touch with them, check out their links. I've included all of them below the video, so it's really accessible to all of you. And be sure to subscribe to this series and get involved in the conversation by leaving a comment. I know all of us would love to hear from you. And thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're so grateful. I will speak for myself. I'm so grateful. Thank yeah, you. I'm so grateful. And Ashley, before we go, could I acknowledge yeah. you and just thank you so much for the gift that you be. You're such a unique space of like no judgment, total receiving, curiosity. You're such, you are a stunning person. And I'm so grateful that you invited us on here. I just adore you. So That's thank you. So good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for wanting the receiving it all. <laughs>
it, you know, Ashley, I will also acknowledge you because um, a lot of times you'll do interviews and the joy of the interviewer doesn't resonate through the interview. So thank you so much for having that um, play with it and space. Thank you. And true question. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, did, I had questions written down and didn't look at them at all. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I, but I love that. That's so fun because we were just, you know, surfing energy. You know, we were just like, oh, what's coming up now? This is fun. And oh, that's curious. And oh, that, let's talk more about that. And that's my favorite way to do it anyway. So thank you for being so flexible and willing to do that with me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care.